Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. We're taking a look at another Brood War replay today. We've got Rich spawning here in the top right hand corner. Shine over in the top left. I love Shine. A great player. Fantastic human being and an awesome addition to the community. Has been the ASL observer for a very long time. And has proven himself to be quite the contender as well, even getting a second place to Flash uh, in one season of the ASL. So, if not for Flash, this guy would probably be an ASL uh, champion. But it was a little unlucky the timing when he decided to uh, really get into his practice mode and show off all of his builds. That's the. The way that we like to think about Shine, at least back in the days, old bag of builds. He had a whole bunch of builds that he had prepared from all of his years of watching ASL, of observing uh, for Africa TV. He pulled out all those builds in one season, tried to win an ASL, almost made it through. Just wasn't quite there though, not quite at the level of Flash and really who is, but since that ASL run, he's been spamming out games and practicing really, really hard his very normal play. His macro-centric style has sort of developed here. And look at this. A cannon rush is coming down from our Protoss player. Rich is going to try to get a bit cheeky here. Put a cannon in the background. And, uh, yeah, we're getting in position to maybe start to hit these, uh, probes. Oh, 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 the probe. This probe is going to die. This probe likely going to die as well. I think this is just a complete shutdown. Oh, that's a little bit unfortunate. Yeah, two drones can hit that, so he will have to cancel. Easily shut down here by Shine. He lost one drone, but he traded it out for one probe. And he really hasn't put too much commitment into this. He's... Just now finishing the spawning pool, so he can just make all drones, which is a great follow-up to this. You can see three drones in production right now. He's going to grab his gas, interestingly. Going for gas, rather than his third hatchery uh, at a third base. Nexus starts back at home as Rich sees that no lings are being produced. He's got to start a cannon soon, though. He does have to start a cannon eventually. Um, okay, there it is. It's gonna start before the links pop out of the egg, so there's no way to run by uh, the cannon here, and we will send out that third drone for that third base. I'm gonna go ahead and take that now. But he's got a lot of gas here to work with, and I'm curious what he wants to do with that. Rich is a little bit slower than he otherwise would be. He spent quite a bit of money. Building the extra pylons, canceling several of them. He built an extra cannon there as well. And so his economy is a little bit slowed down. He's also supply blocked right now, which is a bit of a pain. Waiting for the Nexus to finish. Oh, he's building two Nexus. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Rich, you dirty, dirty Protoss player. Looks like Shine is sending one Ling around the map looking for stuff, but he didn't send it to the bottom right-hand corner. It looked like it was on that trajectory, but it in fact was not. Overlord, though, might, may end up spotting this. If you find this, it's an easy kill, but if Protoss gets away with a free Nexus, it is insane how far ahead they're going to get. We have Lair almost done. Gas just started. Hasn't even started mining that yet. Cybercore. Going to be on the way. Are we going to get a Spire? I imagine we will. There it is. Spire in the production tab. Overlord stops at the ramp. Oh, man. Rich might get away with this. That is super frustrating. Rich is a ladder player he's like ACS level um, Protoss so pretty darn strong not quite at the level to compete in ASL but he can pull out some tricks we saw him against Flash 
earlier in this week. He was incredibly strong. The probe heads out. What the heck is this probe doing? Is it going to go for a scout? Just pretend that that was hidden down there the whole time? Well, it was hidden down there the whole time, but that he didn't build a nexus? Let's send this probe out to, to see what he can see. But he should imagine that there's going to be... Uh, Muta's on the way. The timing of the gas is going to be indicative of a mutilus switch. Well, we actually have Hydralis Den starting up now. I think Shine going to be a little confused as to why there's not more pressure coming his way. How come there's not Zealots being sent at him? How come Rich is just being so passive in this game and the real reason is of course because of this nexus there's no reason to get aggressive here as rich just defend everything and be on three base versus three base hydras are gonna be spammed out now by shine he's got speed coming up it's gonna get missile attacks one we don't have many cannons in this natural could be a real issue here for Rich as he, he checks the natural. He doesn't really see much. He's not even going to see these hydras popping out. And if we send these directly across the map, if Shine sends these over to the natural, there's really not much to defend. Could be in a lot of trouble. I think he's canceling and restarting that Corsair over and over again. Making sure that it doesn't pop out and just get killed by these Scourge. As two cannons finish in the main, you should be okay. Should be able to keep that alive. Starting a gas down here in the bottom right. This is this is a pain, guys. This is a real pain. Watching this from the Zerg perspective. I hope that Shine just busts him here pretty soon. Because otherwise, he's going to be in a really big conundrum here. Sonic Storm has started. We're going to hit that early timing, about eight minutes right before Sonic Storm is finished. He's going to leave three Hydras back at home, but he's coming across the map with a good 12. Let's see if he can punch through the front. More Hydras are being made. We're stopped at 40 drones and pumping out a lot of Hydras. Let's see what kind of damage he can do. He's definitely going to be able to stop the Forge from upgrading here. Overlord's speed is done. That DT is going to get taken out. Forge will be killed. The gateway can be killed as well. But I doubt that he's going to bust all the way through. We've still got time before Storm finishes. 8 minute 30. Breaking through this wall now. That's a little bit too many cannons, I think, for just these 12 Hydras. Plus the Zealots here at the front. Ooh, nice snipe on the Templar. A very good move there from Shine. Could lead to a bust through. Are we are we willing to risk it here? I don't think so. Seven drones on the way and a fourth base is about to start. Still does not know about this base. So unfortunate. But Shine is just going to be playing from behind. He doesn't even know it yet. He sees what he sees at the front. And he has no idea... that he has incomplete information. This is going to be such a strong attack when it finally does come out. We're going up to four, six, seven, eight. We can even go to 10 gateways from this three base economy. Going to add on a few more gateways here and the push will be really, really strong. It's going to be huge when it finally does come out. Shine, with 54 drones now, can afford to transfer some of these over to the fourth base and start his lurker production here pretty soon. Plus two upgrade is on the way. A little bit close to a supply block here. Oh, actually not too bad. I saw f uh, three overlords on the way. It looks like he's just opening up some ply, getting ready for the Lurker transition. 
something that I fail to do oftentimes. Preemptively building a bunch of overlords before the lurker upgrade finishes is a pretty sick move. Very smart stuff. Expect nothing less from Shine. Seven more drones on the way right as this army starts to push out. Can he set up the contain here in front of the natural of Rich? It's not as dangerous for Rich as it otherwise would be. You can see he's going up to 10 gateways. And the army that's moving forward here is pretty strong. Nothing out of the ordinary though. It's not more than Shine would expect at this point in the game. Very nice snipes on some of these Dragoons and a Templar as well. That's a very nice move from Shine. Got a lot of drones over here. Got to send them over to begin mining here at this fourth. Tons of Hydras popping out. His supply is looking really, really good. But the amount of units that Rich is going to be sending forward to try and break this contain it's going to be a little bit perplexing to shine. These are some good storms. Shoving back these Hydras. There's a good opportunity right now for Rich to start breaking these Lurker lines. He's got quite a lot of Dragoons. He has the Observer and there's not a lot of Hydra reinforcements here just yet. There, There's the Hydra reinforcements coming across the map. And so as the Dragoons start to push forward, he's going to be able to pull Hydras out to start hitting these Dragoons and killing them off. Good snipes on some of these Templars. He's gonna get a second Templar, killing a lot of these Dragoons. Oh my goodness, here comes an Overlord to bottom right. It's just gonna spot this base here. There's no cannons or anything in this position. And Shine is going to go, oh, I see. That's what's going on. You've got another base down here in the bottom right. That's why you're being so passive. I have to send something down there, but I have to keep enough back at home to defend against this push. Oh, the Zealots are just running into these Lurkers. This is perfectly done by Shine. Rich really falling short here. It's like he's going to get completely wrecked and lose his bottom right-hand corner base at the same time. All the Dragoons go down. Really nice macro here from Shine. It's going to overwhelm rich even with the hidden base not able to make this one work kind of a brutal shutdown here in game number one from the very beginning of the game with the cannon rush here not working out for rich he tried to bank on a hidden base to help him come back from that deficit but it wasn't good enough shine just a little bit too strong with the contain his Lurker timing was perfect. His Hydra macro was insane. So many Hydras coming out of this man. You can see he was spending his money very, very well. It's tough to spend your money with 59 drones on four bases. And he's only got seven hatcheries. He didn't even finish his eighth hatchery. Still able to spend all his money this efficiently. Really good stuff from Shine. Anyway, we've got another game to get into it's a three game series game number two is supposed to be epic so i'm looking forward to that one let's jump right in okay game number one we saw a bit of a lackluster performance from rich having a hard time breaking through that containment albeit it is one of the most difficult things to do in this matchup breaking out of a lurker contain is very tough uh, on a lot of these different maps. Radeon is no different. There's a lot of space in front of the natural. Dominator here. It's a little harder to set up, but one nice thing about lurkers is that they do not have mischance going uphill. So even if you're putting lurkers down here, as long as you have a vision of the high ground, you can... set up a pretty reasonable lurker contain and it's not like for instance tanks or something if you've got a widespread of tanks all the tanks on the low ground are going to be missing half their shots the lurkers can still do their job 
properly despite having that disadvantage. A Nexus first coming online here for our Protoss player. Rich is going to get a little bit greedy, but this is in, in response to what he's he's seen so far from Shine. Shine went for an 11 hatch. Oh, wow. He went for a third hatch before pool because his overlord made its way to the front. His overlord gets in here and sees the forge and he's going to go over or three hatch before pool. Kind of insane. Is he actually visible here? No, he can't see that. The pylon's going to finish. That's been spotted now. But can we build a cannon back here? This is a sneaky little spot to build a cannon. That tiny little lantern right there, whatever that thing is, is actually blocking uh, a drone from coming forward and hitting the either the cannon or the probe. Two creep colonies are going to be made to deal with this cannon. I wonder if it'll be enough. He's got to start this. What are we doing? Oh, we're waiting for the spawning pool to finish. Oh, no. Oh, no. The spawning pool is not done. There we go. Spawning pool finishes. The two cannons are the, uh, the two sunken colonies begin, but the cannon is canceled. And so this rush is over. Kind of a fake here. It only costs uh, a few minerals for the cancel and then the hundred minerals for the pylon. Not too bad. Forcing out two sunken colonies here. Not too bad at all. Definitely a better use of resources than the previous uh, pylon cannon play. We go ahead and shoot down his own creep colony. It's kind of blocking his mining right now. And this game is going to normalize. That was a strange little uh, back and forth there at the beginning of this one, but... As everything calms down, a Hydra follow-up from Shine will start. It's going to pop out a few lings, and with the Sunken Colony, he should be able to block access to the main and stop Rich from getting in there and uh, learning about this Hydra Den and the follow-up. I wonder if this is going to be a full commitment to Hydra Bust, or are we just going to see him kill the wall? I think going for the wall kill here makes more sense. As the Stargate is just about to finish, he has the correct number of drones to uh, start this attack. 974, it looks like. There's seven and there's four. That means he will be able to build a hatchery during this attack. As he continuously builds hydras, that extra drone will eventually mine enough for a hatchery and he can start that. That'll help his transition a little bit later on. Hydras are going to go across the map. The zealot really didn't get too much information. It moved forward and then it just went all the way back home. I just making their way to the front. The Corsair is going to be spotted here. Will be pushed back by these Hydras. Going to start work on this wall. Gateway is under threat. Range is nearly complete. Zealot taking some damage here. And more Hydras are going to be popping out. Three more on the way. He is committing to this so far. Running forward here without the range. Can't actually hit these cannons just yet. Cannons are going to de deal some good damage to these Hydras. Going after the Pylon. A reasonable target right now. But the cannon over, over here is a little bit further ahead than you usually would see. It's not behind the forge. It's kind of under the forge. Which means that you can't hit this forge without getting attacked by the cannon. So you have to target that one down if he wants to get this wall. I think an Overlord was just killed. We're slightly supply blocked. This Corsair doesn't have any kills on it, but 
Uh, there might have been a second Corsair that I missed. More drones coming out now. So here comes the transition. He actually is able to hit this. Okay, I'm a little surprised. I thought that you couldn't hit that. But I guess you can hit the forge from just that perfect angle. And so he will get the forge and prevent the upgrade. Already we have forges in the main base. Just one forge, in fact, in the main base. Some more gateways being made here. It looks like we're going to go four gate. And start to pump out some more Corsairs. No, no Corsairs. Maybe he goes to eight gate. Are we just going to go all the way up to eight and start getting Dragoons out? I thought he might just go four gate, try to pump out a whole bunch of Zealots and put the pressure back on to shine. He's made a lot of Hydras, but he's trying desperately right now to pump out as many drones as possible. We've got the six hatch on the way. An Evo Chamber should be coming down any second. Oh, there it is. Okay, Evo Chamber in the natural. Plus one starts. Plus one is about halfway complete here for Rich. Five more drones coming out. He's finally up to that 35 count. And so he has a functioning economy once again. Going up to about 45 is where you can start to really transition into Lurkers. You can get your third gas online, or get your third gas. The Spire can be supported as well. Overlord speed is coming. And Shine seems to be in a pretty reasonable position. I, I, I would be pretty happy from this spot. Not totally worried about uh, getting bowled over by the Protoss, but we do need to switch back into army here pretty soon. These Hydras out in the front are not going to hold back the tide of Zealots forever. And so he goes ahead and starts even Ling speed he didn't have yet. I'm going to go ahead and get that upgrade. Lurker upgrade on the way. Third gas is now operational. 50 drones. So he went even harder on drones than I would have expected. Is there a timing here where Rich can come out and deal some damage? There just might be. Let's see if he can come over here and push the issue. It's quite a good number of Hydras, but 12 Zealots can fight a lot of Hydras. I think you need at least two full groups of Hydras to take that on. And it looks like that's pretty much what Shine has. Got some Templar here building energy in the natural. Not ready to move out with those just yet. A lot of lower ranked Pro Protoss players on the ladder will just make moves where they send out these Templar and try to hopefully get up to your natural and force a fight. Most pro players will be able to spread their Hydras though and snipe down your Templar as they're coming across the map. It's a little harder if you're a bit lower rank, but that's definitely the right move. That's the correct move. It's just to snipe these down. Looks like a third base is about to start here. Fourth base should be on the way shortly for Shine, and there it is. It's actually finishing up now with 53 drones already finished. He can quickly start to saturate this base and go into Hive. Hive tech going to be on the way here soon. We should see melee upgrades beginning as well. Maybe armor. Yeah, we've got three evolution chambers. Just hasn't quite started those upgrades. As of yet, needs to get the Hive on the way here pretty soon, too. Has the money for it, but a little bit distracted with sending drones to their correct locations and moving these Hydras around to figure out where that Protoss army is at. Just going ahead and taking this high ground is good, but I feel like Shine is leaping ahead right now. There's the melee and the armor. 
10 groups of lings on the way. He's just poking and prodding right now, seeing what he can do. And the answer is not much. He can't really poke in right now. He's trying to make a transition happen. And while you're in the midst of a transition like this, it's generally not a good idea to just start attacking your opponent, throwing away armies. Much better to sit here, spend all your gas on upgrades and lurkers, all your minerals on lings. He is pumping out a few more drones here and there. He could actually use to transfer some of these, uh, especially here from the natural. Just take like six drones and send them down here. Uh, would be a decent idea. There's a Maelstrom. Not the greatest Maelstrom in the world. Only hitting three Hydras. Gonna try to snipe some Observers right now. Lurkers are gonna spread out onto this high ground. He really doesn't want to give up the high ground right now. Big counterattack over here. Counterattacking force. Possibly a flanking force now coming up from behind this army. That Dark Archon on 1 HP is still alive. Somehow just standing in the perfect place not to get hit by the spines. It does eventually get killed by those spines though. We've got one more storm. He casts it on the lings here at the back of the pack. But this flanking force may be able to overwhelm the dragoons here. Some zealots coming up for the support. And hydras as they're coming out of the eggs are the most vulnerable. Just kind of running here into Dragoon Fire is not a very good trade, but now that the Hydras are coming in from behind and targeting down the weakened Dragoons is doing a much better job. This is a pretty close hold here from Shine. You can see his rallies are just barely enough to hold back the tides of blue Protoss crashing here into his natural he doesn't lose any buildings he doesn't lose any drones and he clears out some dragoon so i'd say this went pretty darn well overall for shine he's gonna make a bunch of more lurkers and continue to pump lings his plus one plus one is about to finish we have adrenal glands finishing up as well a little late on the defiler mound seems like that building has been forgotten for now but hopefully he'll get that going here in a minute once he can deal with this attack that's being sent over to the top right plus two is done so he'll still be killing off these links in two hits and we don't have many lurkers in this position where are the templar to follow this up there's one templar behind this army and it's about to have a single storm. So that's probably not going to be enough to break through. Unless Shine just lets everything get hit by a massive storm. And I doubt that's going to happen. He's also got four lurkers behind this. We'll move them into position. Pretty good hold here from Shine. Once again, not losing any drones. Wow, so many lurkers being made here at the front line. Still no defile amount. I'm a little bit worried about that. The fact that he hasn't popped out a defiler here yet and is just focusing on Ling Lurker could be to his detriment. No fifth base yet for Rich. He's got his fourth, but no fifth gas. Or no fourth gas, excuse me. Just a four base uh, that's a mineral only, which could be a little bit problematic. Time to send a drone down to bottom right. Some lurkers are going to be over here as well. Send over here. Center right will be the target. Try to get some lurkers here on the low ground to make it difficult for the Protoss to break that position. He just lost his uh, potential fifth base there on the low ground. That mineral only has been denied. Ooh, a big snipe here. This could be killing off one Templar. Going for a second. It's really close. He gets it. Nice snipe there. The upgrades are looking very good. There's the Defiler Mound on the way. It's going to be a while before those spells are operational, but in the meantime, going to be fighting here with a lot of Lings and Lurkers. Pushing now up towards this top right. Might try to break this position, but... 
Oh man, Shine's gonna reinforce from the from this position rather than coming around the back. I wonder if this is the right choice. So many of these units are kind of clumped up right now. He's gonna run forward and burrow the lurkers in the front. The storms are gonna be insane. Look at how much damage comes through with those storms. Oh my god, that was so much damage. Okay, lurkers come from behind as well, but they're gonna get surrounded by these uh, zealots and picked off pretty efficiently. This is rough. I hear a DT hitting something. Oh, it's this uh, hatchery over here. Shine needs to take care of that. The Dark Templar should be picked off here in a moment. There's only two lurkers on this low ground. Does he have a Nidus finished? He does. Need to quickly connect that and get some reinforcements over to that base. Archon here at the front with 25 kills. Holy, that must have been an Archon formed out of the storm, uh, the Templars who stormed that area. That was some insane level storms penetrating that position, but Shine still holding on to all of his bases thus far. Gonna have some more lurkers pop out here. They immediately burrow and start to wreck these zealots. However, the storms are gonna be insane on all these clumped lurkers. Lurkers coming in from behind as well, getting stormed. Over and over again, the lurkers are gonna deal some damage, but they're not gonna be able to clear everything. And Lings will be pushing forward. Consume is about to finish. He just needs that consume upgrade. You can go ahead and throw down a Dark Swarm here to potentially push this back. Here comes some more Lurkers. Just coming out of this fifth base. Need to start mining that here pretty soon. It's four base to four base, and it's been four base to four base for quite some time. Rich has done a good job of keeping the pressure on to shine rotating his army and making it hard for him to defend everywhere at the same time no lurkers anymore on this low ground and it seems like this will be the next target for rich good reaction here from shine gonna get into position in time blocking these units from coming down the ramp is hugely important he cannot be losing this base right now, or he will fall desperately far behind. Looks like one storm gonna come down. Deal some damage to this lurker. Pretty annoying stuff. Plague is on the way. More lurkers coming out. Hydras as well. As he continues to macro. A base will be coming down shortly here at the bottom center. Another Archon being made. I guess that Archon, that Hero Archon ended up going down a little earlier. Good defensive position here on the high ground. So hard to get up a ramp like this. You need so many units. Oh, the Archon gets trapped on the ramp. That's a nice play. What do we have over here at this base? <clears throat> Quite a bit, actually. Three Lurkers and a bunch of Lings popping out. Not bad. It'll hold on. Um, long enough for reinforcements to arrive at least. One single Lurker in the midst of this entire Protoss army being quite annoying. Finally does get picked off. Another rotation here from Rich. He's going to head up towards the north. Sometimes you can find a position like this. The Lurkers are all on the high ground here and over here. And you come up this ramp and get on this high ground. It's incredibly hard to dislodge a Protoss player from a position like that. The Protoss army can just trade so well against all your units coming up the ramp. There's the first big plague of the game. Hitting a lot of these zealots and softening them up. How are we looking on upgrades? 3-3 three, three is now done. 3-3 three, three is here for Protoss as well. First plasma shield upgrade is done. But it hasn't started to add on any more of those upgrades just yet. Has a good force here to defend the 5th base. And once Protoss gets a 5th base, it becomes really, really tough. That's a lot of lurkers here, but without too much support, the Protoss army can bang its way through that. 
lot of those zealots that were plagued earlier go down pretty quickly to the lurker spines but the dragoons and archons pushing their way through now with the reinforcements down here he's going to be able to push back once again likely be able to take this base here the sixth base finally Ooh, good chunk of hydras here to gun down these archons and he's doing a good job of targeting those getting rid of the archons focusing on the dragoons this is all very good stuff from shine who will back away now take more of a defensive position in this natural oh a drop coming in actually gets sniped that's a very nice snipe i'm glad i caught that snipe on the shuttle as it's coming in i'm gonna deny a potential storm drop uh coming into his sixth base or his fifth base excuse me sixth base does go down but it's fine shine is gonna move forward try to retake this position he has of course more than half the map this being a three player map holding the other main base location will eventually net him a lead he'll be able to mine more than rich if this game continues on it's just it's gonna be such a long slog with protoss on five bases they can pump so many maxed out armies and throw them at you and you just have to defend everything correctly and keep expanding you have to keep expanding here as zerg if you stall out at all the trades are going to be way too efficient for the protoss and eventually they will whittle you down even though you've mined way more than them you can still end up losing a game like that pretty nice snipe there on that templar losing a templar with a lot of energy just for a storm on one drone not exactly worth it now shine he should be able to transfer these drones back to the mineral only continue to mine there coming out for a snipe on a templar not able to get that one small groups of lings doing their job pretty well though single lurker not sure where that was going oh a lurker drop over here 16 kills oh wow i'll have to picture and picture that one at 24 minutes a lurker drop getting 16 kills is pretty massive still with 45 drone uh 45 probes though mining off of three bases it's not the worst thing in the world you can definitely be okay here uh as protoss you're gonna be having a reasonable income he may not even he may choose to not even rebuild probes at this point just mine with what he's got and try to max out his army supply pushing forward here great plague on some of this army a counterattack at the same time heading over to this base but lurkers are already present it's like quite a few drones died to one of these storms in fact like 10 drones just went down which is pretty rough oh another lurker over here high ground lurker just out of range of these cannons gonna be doing some work shine pushing forward gonna continue to try to expand maybe try to get this base here although it could be hard if he gets the high ground though with a bunch of lurkers and a defiler up there it'll be a difficult position for rich to break through Pulling off that lurker can get back to mining now over here at the mineral only workers defending this spot oof ling goes down zealot gonna hold that high ground for now but i think that it's about time for shine to start pushing towards that position filer's ready rich gonna break through the front line of lurkers though before that can happen oh great storms here killing a lot of these drones this is a very abusive position right here that rich is uh, going in and attacking over and over again standing from the high ground and able to storm the drones on the low ground it's brutal i can tell you as a zerg player this is so frustrating to deal with 
He's losing so many drones down to just 39. Not where he wants to be at all. Going to be chased back for now, but this is painful. Really, really painful. And Shine's just going to have to eat that damage and start making drones over again. This time, he's actually going to take this high ground, which is what you, you have to do this. You have to come up here and set up lurkers on this high ground with a defiler, or you're just going to keep taking that damage over and over and over again. Thought I heard a shuttle. There it is. Shuttle heading out on the map. Storm drop en route. We'll keep an eye on that. As uh, Zealots try to come down here and clear out these lurkers. It'll be time for Rich to take another base here shortly. He's got another robo coming up. There's that shuttle heading around the bottom side of the map. He's managed to avoid the vision of Shine so far. And this will be his target. A really plump, juicy base here. That is fully saturated and mining. Oh, it's not... 100% saturated, but one drone per patch anyway. Let me go ahead and drop some Templar in here. Get some nice storm drops. Deal a bunch of damage and then go for the storms over in this base as well. Looks like he can transfer his aggression up here to this base. Another nice pull here from Shine. Doing a good job of keeping his drones alive. But he's probably just going to straight up lose this base. And this is painful for Shine. There's still minerals over here that he could have used. And I guess that shuttle went down to the Scourge in that corner. Some Templar are going to get caught here in the middle. Utilizing a few of those storms. At least getting those out before everything goes down. Lurker's going to come up here to high ground. I don't see an observer with this. The Lurker should be able to clear everything uh, before the cannons can finish. And so denying a base... And Rich killing a base. A little bit of a trade back and forth between these two players. Rich, can he break this natural though? It's like he's not even going to try. Backing away, he's got one Templar with this army. Pretty low Templar count, honestly, at this point in the game. With the numbers of depleted geysers we've got. We should be able to pump out a lot of Templar. I guess he's, he doesn't have a depleted geyser here. He's got one fully mining geyser. And he's starting to produce reavers. So that's going to take up a lot of his overall uh, gas bank. Pushing up here onto high ground is a little bit crazy. He will eventually break through this, I think. But this lurker in the background has done so much damage. Five zealot kills, I think is the count on that lurker and these lurkers are doing very well too i just don't think this is worth it trying to push up this ramp here right now the counterattack of zealots gonna get cleared out by the lurkers oh another drop oh boy okay i missed this one too drop over here as he's trying to push up this high ground i guess he gets these hatcheries maybe that makes it worth it i don't know we've still got a lot of hatches around the map here for shine I don't think this is going to slow him down too much. Time to take this base, I think, for Shine as well. Send some lurkers down here. The drone count was brought pretty low. He's starting to replenish that, though. Getting this gas online. Definitely in need of this, ga this gas. Actually, not mining off, off of that with three drones is a little bit painful. And so... Rich is going to move back to the center of the map. Look for another weakened location to try and pounce upon. This base coming up should not be allowed to stand. Or probably we're going to see Rich lose this game. He needs to def he needs to kill another base and take a base of his own. Or he's going to start to fall behind. Do we have Reavers at this point? Maybe that was Reavers being sent into this base. That got all those kills. I'm not sure. The storm's going to be spent on these high grounds. But Lings are going to come out and start to snipe some of these Templar. Nice job killing off two Templar. That's minus one Archon for Rich. Diving up on the high ground now. Just going to go after these Zealots. Some really good plagues went down on a lot of this before the fight. 
The dragoons are doing nothing here in this battle. The zealots are being left to just try to fight what they can. Archon here going to be taken down by these lings. Hydra can't really deal any damage to it, but the Archon, oh, it manages to survive just barely, but he's going to target it down regardless. Good job by Shine there. Getting rid of those high value units. Finally going to take this base on high ground. Has a bunch of lurkers prepared to try and hold that position. But with the Reaver, it's possible to just shove up this ramp. Slowly but surely break these positions. With just small uh, investment of minerals. Trying to move up this direction once again. Taking the fight here. Outside of range of the lurkers this time. There's only three lurkers on high ground. This Archon looks like it'll be targeted down. A very nice target. Once again, Shine targeting down the most important units in each of these fights. Going for little trades, little bits of damage wherever he can. Targeting down a few more of these dragoons. Some of the dragoons going to get picked off because so many of them are low. From the earlier uh, plagues. They're going to die extremely fast to the Ling and Hydra attacks that follow them up. Trying to push on this high ground right now. I don't know if this is the right choice. We need to be battling over bases at this point in the game. Shine is actually eclipsing the supply now of his opponent. Wow, a bunch of drones went down there. I don't know exactly how many, but... It looks like at least 10 on that corner patch. We're running out of steam here. Rich is getting pushed back on all fronts. Even though he's getting some kills on a few drones. I just don't think he's attacking into the right areas. This is not a very important position to hold. And these bases are now mining. We don't have drones over to this location just yet. But we will here very soon. Almost out of money over here. Rich is not mining anywhere else. It's like a few more drones went down there. Trading out an Archon though is not the greatest. Here comes the Reavers finally. This is what I've been kind of waiting for here. Plague going to go down on that Reaver. Oh, a quick dodge. With the pickup there. It's actually going to save the Reaver. However, immediately afterward, another consume and another... Plague goes down on this Reaver, bringing it very, very low. Some of these sunken colonies are being pushed back. Shuttle, got to be very careful with that. Oh boy, Shuttle goes down. Reaver's going to be targeted. Really nice targeting there by Shine. What I'm gathering from Shine is just the importance of targeting is what I'm learning. Really, really good targeting from him this entire game. Fantastic Hydralis control in all of these little skirmishes. He's constantly been able to target down Archons, Dragoons, and now Reavers. Small group of Lings chasing the army once again. He's going to dive on a Templar. I mean, this is so good by Shine. These are the things that a lot of players neglect to do. But Shine is constantly active with these small groups. Backing in and out. Looking for opportunities to snipe things. Looking for opportunities to deal some damage. Now taking the fight here on the high ground. Rich really has nowhere left to go. Despite killing off the bases in the top right. Despite taking a lot of good trades. Coming down this ramp. Rich not able to take this game because Shine, constant, good micro, excellent macro, able to overcome the Protoss in the middle of the map, eventually surrounding him, eventually picking off enough units that he can take those fights. And I got to say, very impressive play from our bag of builds, Shine. He is not known for, you know, huge macro play, but he will be soon enough.
this guy has improved by leaps and bounds his late game macro his late game control and his standard play he will be known for that in the future i guarantee it guys we've got one more game to watch rich has been getting dominated so far this last game was a lot closer but still a shine victory can rich get a game off of this man he was able to take games off of flash in our pre previous video certainly he can take a game off of shine let's find out in that final match game number three here excuse me <clears throat> shine spawning in the bottom right hand corner we've got rich down here in the bottom left and the big question on everybody's minds are we gonna see another cannon rush certainly hasn't worked out too well for rich so far Shines seem to have the uh, correct response for each time it's happened. Pulling drones, making sunken colonies, whatever he needs to do to just get rid of that. And he's always been able to recover pretty well afterwards. So we'll see if Rich is uh, interested in trying that one more time. Seems like he might be going Nexus first. That's the feeling I'm getting here. Call it a hunch, guys. We're probably going to see Nexus first. And Shine has just been consistently over and over again playing this 12 hatch style. So looks like Rich is going to get away with it. He's 100% going to get away with it. And this time we don't have the overlord over the natural so it's not like we can throw down a third hatchery before pool i doubt that's gonna happen um drone will be sent out here comes the pool and so the value and the economic edge of going 12 hatchery versus protoss has kind of been lost yeah it's just not it's just not as good when you find out that they've gone nexus first i would say a pretty sizable advantage here for protoss not huge but it's a it's it, it's an advantage two minute 30 gas once again we saw this last time, uh, I think, on this map. Yeah, game number one, he went for the very early gas. Gas before third hatch. Gonna throw down that third hatch now. We'll probably see another Hydra play out of him. Although he could also go for uh, some sort of crazy uh, Mutalisk build as well. That is absolutely possible. Some lings going to pop out. Very important to get these lings on the field. Uh, even though there's no pressure coming from zealots just yet. We really do want to get lings out so that we can prevent the probe from just continuously scouting. Want to get rid of this here pretty soon. The layer is actually coming up in the natural. Looks like that's going to be scouted. And so a very important scout will come out for Rich. He knows kind of what's happening now. It was actually layer before speed. Which leans me in the direction now of a Mutalisk timing. I think that may be what we're going to see. Some sort of Mutalisk play out of shine whether it be like a full-on ogre zerg or just five mutas into uh, more expansions and an eventual hydra transition or more more hatcheries excuse me not more expansions and a eventual hydra transition either way oh wait what's this no this must be for the spire yeah okay spire thought that was going to be a hydra den for a second completely throw me off one zealot comes out. Just kills the Ling chasing the probe. That's all he's able to do. He could come in and, and try to affect some more damage, but... 
There should be some more lings popping out soon. He sees drones, all drones. If the zealot had come right into the natural, he might have been able to force a, at least a pro pull or a drone pull off the line, but he's going to keep that zealot alive and in the wall instead. And that means that he's not totally aware of what's going on. He doesn't know that there's going to be this spire coming. You can kind of intuit it. And I expect we'll see cannons come down here pretty soon. He already built the pylon in the mineral line uh, at the natural. So we'll probably get a cannon like right here, maybe. Or a cannon right here. Maybe both. To deal with this uh, incoming mutilisk play. But no second gas. Which is again confusing me a little bit. Maybe it is just for Scourge. Scourge maybe a few mutas to try and help him uh, to transfer into six hatch Hydra. It's just it's a little confusing to me to see the the two minute thirty gas. I guess that's perhaps because of the Nexus first. But the Nexus first. He gets the Corsair over there pretty quickly and kills an Overlord. And so even though we went to the 2 minute 30 gas. Oh, very good connection there. Even though we went with such an early gas, we're only just barely able to get the Scourge out in time to prevent a second Overlord death. So I guess this is all just very nicely calculated by shine i'll have to put that in my memory banks that with nexus first you need to start a five minute 30 gas or a two minute 30 gas excuse me to make sure that your layer is on time to defend against this hydras are now starting to come out eight hydras in production 31 drones only is a little bit low on the drone count. You can see the saturation is not that good right now. Just eight drones at each base. Barely enough to saturate all the mineral patches. At both the natural and the third. And definitely not enough to produce non-stop hydras off of six hatcheries. You need about 35. Ooh, a run by here. Run by into the natural. It's going to dive on top of these cannons. Killing off two cannons with just these lings. The probes will come out to get rid of this. Two probes are lost, but pretty reasonable hold there. Wow, the Hydras actually take a fight with these DTs. Two DTs coming forward right now, and there's no overlords going to be left over. After those are picked off, we've got no overloads in production here either. This is a really big problem right now for Shine. He's going to pull all of his drones away. And as he makes a run for it. Oh, we had a, a pause there. Drone's going to get sent back. Overload's going to be dying in the natural. Oh man, he has to snipe this Templar. Snipe the Templar! Oh, he blocks it. Very nicely done. Gets the Templar. Keeps the DT out of his base. These Corsairs have done some amazing work. Only three of them remain. But he's done a lot of damage here. Slowed down Shine quite a lot. Killed quite a few of his overlords. At the cost of about two DTs, five Zealots, and a couple of Corsairs. Not bad at all. This has gone pretty well, and now he's 20 workers ahead. So many overlords having to be produced right now. Severe supply blockage for shine in that moment <clears throat> he's gonna go ahead and pump his way up to about 45 drones now get into that position where he can produce fully off of six hatch hydra i'm a little bit worried about his uh plus two upgrade he hasn't started that yet sometimes he can get a little flustered in these moments uh, as a Zerg player when you're getting pulled apart by a Protoss. Nice snipe there on one of these Corsairs, but... You can miss one thing, and if you just miss... Just one part of your build... 
could be completely devastating. Eight Muta start. Interesting. Very interesting choice here to switch into Muta now. He's seen what is available from Rich. He knows that there's no red Archon. Gonna go up to 10 Mutas now. He sniped a few of these Corsairs. More are being produced. But he could... He has the potential right now to just fly in and snipe all of these Templars. Three cannons is not gonna save you. Three cannons is uh, kind of a pittance here to 10 Mutas. They're gonna fly right in and snipe everything. And it can very quickly spiral out of control. Now making a lot of Hydras to follow that up. Let's see if he can pull off this finesse play. Coming in, just snipe down all these Templars, bring the Hydras to the front, and fight the army, break in through the natural, and end this game. His supply really close to riches right now. And he's gonna go ahead and take a fourth base. This is a, a backup, just in case this play, you know, results in kind of an even position. If it just falls completely flat on his face, he's probably dead. If it does super well. He could just win. But things could go like semi well. And he might end up in a position where. He's not dead. But he needs something extra. He needs that fourth base to continue on. To be in a good spot. And so he's going to go ahead and take that as a placeholder. No drones are probably going to be transferred to that. For the time being. He's only pumping hydras in preparation for this next attack. Hydras here on the northern side, keeping the attention of Rich for the moment. Okay, a few drones are going to get transferred over here. He's kind of baiting, baiting Rich to come out and fight. If Rich comes to try and attack this base, that'll be the moment to pounce. Still more Hydras being produced. A few drones sent up here to the top right. He will get that saturated. And here he comes. Rich coming out on the map. This is the big moment. He's going to spot it with the Overlord here. Sees this army movement. Hydras are not responding. He actually needs to pull these back. We can come in for the big flank of Hydras. Uh, in a moment here. Once the Templar are all gone. That'll be the time to dive in. Only two Templar with this army. And the Mutas are ready, sharking around, looking for the opportunity to dive in on this. He's bringing all the Hydras to bear. Here we go. Diving on top of the Templar. One Templar. Two Templar have been picked off. And now the Hydras coming in from the flank. Going to stop the Dragoons from retreating properly. Looks like all the Hydras are just going to be let go here. Or the Mutas are going to be let go. All of them dying. But the Hydra flank is insane. He's blocked so many of these Dragoons. And killed off a massive number of them. Now I'm going to push over towards this natural. There are two Templar here. So he can't overextend right now. If he gets hit by some really good storms. Oh, he snipes a Templar. Ooh, those are some very good snipes. Killing off a couple of those Templar. And now taking this fight. Can he push through for the win? He's going after this base. A lot of these dragons falling. There's still four cannons though. Zealot reinforcements are coming forward. We haven't started uh, the Lurker upgrade just yet. Two more Templar pop out. They do not have enough energy to cast their storms. And Shine's just going to back away for now. Ten more Hydras on the way. Hasn't added another gas here. At the fourth, he starts the Lurker upgrade. But it is a bit late. I would actually prefer another round of Mutas. Another round of Mutas would be a decent choice right now. We killed all the Corsairs. Oh no, there's the Corsairs over there on the high ground. Storm here in the middle of these Hydras. There's only the one Storm available though. And all the Templar will be picked off. The Hydras breaking through. Coming out was definitely the wrong choice right now. Hydra's just gonna bust through this natural and GG is called a very nice finesse play from Shine. Diving those Templars, picking them off and taking this game with pure Hydralisk.
well played by Shine. Really showing off his power in this series uh, versus Rich, who again played extremely well versus uh, Flash. Be able to take engagements that looked nearly impossible and bring back situations that were looking very rough for him. Not able to do the same against Shine. Didn't try the uh, cannon rush again against him in this game, but went for the Nexus first. And Shine had the perfect response. Totally calm play. Gets the early gas. Grabs his Spire, has the counter to the uh, Corsairs. There was a scary moment. It was all very mini-esque. The attack that Rich did here into the third base. The double DT coming in with the Zealots. At the same time as the Corsairs kill off all the Overlords. He almost managed to break the base and it feels very bad to be forced to pull your drones from that location. But the Hydra number was enough. He didn't over drone at that moment. We can just go back here for a minute. Take a look at that uh, attack timing. Yeah, we can see right here. The Hydras were coming out and fighting these Zealots. This was while the the uh, z the Zerglings were fighting in the natural. Trying to take this fight with, this, with the Zealots. Picking off quite a few of them. There's no Zealot speed here. This is a highly optimized build for this timing to come in and deal damage with the DTs. And so this feels very mini-esque. Diving into this natural. Maybe maybe he forgot Zealot Speed? I don't know, guys. I wonder if Zealot Speed was part of this build and he just didn't have it ready. It's, what is this? Two, three, four gate. Uh, pressure. But as you can see, 31 drones. Shine did not over drone even a single drone. You need 30 at least to start pumping out Hydras. But around 35 is usually when you stop. He just cut drones a little bit earlier to make sure that he had that raw number of Hydras to end up fighting this. He also had the pretty quick overlord speed here. Picking off some of these zealots, he brings the overlord uh, from the north. I don't know what that pause was, but he keeps these overlords alive. The four Corsairs really, really annoying here, killing off so many overlords, but this block was sick. I can't believe that zealot wasn't able to slip by there. It looks like it should be able to, but I think this hydra, like it's a slightly farther south than, than this hydra, was just barely able to block there, and so he keeps the DT out of his main, and then he's able to drone up massively after this, knowing that there's really not much pressure that's going to be coming uh, to his side of the map anytime soon. A great series here between these two. Really did enjoy it. Guys, I hope you did too. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.